What is up everyone, it's The Munch, and welcome to a brand new short and sweet playthrough on Pokemon Spectrum, a very promising looking fan game that I've had downloaded on my computer for quite a while, so I'm not sure when this came out, but if you're familiar with real world geography, you might recognize the shape behind the logo there as Australia, and that's because this is actually a game where the region is based off Australia, including the new Pokemon in it. That's right guys, there's Pokemon in this game, and you all know I am a sucker for some good Pokemon, and this game actually looks really good as I mentioned, so I am very excited to get into it. It is pretty short though, I think there's only two gyms right now and about 80 new Pokemon to check out, which is definitely enough for me, so I hope you guys are excited for this because I definitely am. Some of you may be wondering what's going on with the other playthroughs on this channel, I guess mainly Pokemon Prism, but I'm definitely going to be continuing those. Uh, if you don't know, I'm actually currently on vacation in Puerto Rico with my family. Uh, I decided it might be better to actually record something new and fresh because I didn't really pre-record videos before coming out here back at home. Either way, I am very excited to check out Pokemon Spectrum. It's going to be a pretty short one, so I can hopefully knock it out uh, within a couple of days here, but I am very excited as I mentioned, and if you guys are excited as well, make sure to hit that like button and show your support for the channel. And without further ado, let's get into it. And already we can see the potential cuteness of this game. Just look at that little Pokemon under the tree. Kind of looks like a koala. I'm guessing that's actually what it is. I think koalas are Australian, but what is that thing? <laughs> uh, we got an email from Yuka. This actually reminds me of the intro of Sun and Moon, but that is definitely not Kakui. What was I going to type again? Yes, that was it. Hello, soon-to-be Pokemon trainer. You're about to enter a brand new world. It will be familiar, yet different. You may already know me, but I'll introduce myself anyway. I'm Professor Joshua Yuka. Yuka or Yucca? I actually don't know, but we'll be receiving your first Pokemon from me. But you're already aware of that, right? To get you started as soon as possible, I've decided to send some of my assistants to deliver some gear you'll need on your journey. But you'll still need to come to my lab to choose your rare Pokemon. You better hurry, because they won't be there forever! Can I pick the one in his hair? Because I just realized he totally had a Pokeball in his fro. But that should do it. What did you look like again? Wait, who did... What? Did, what? Why does it say they? What did they look like again? I don't know, I'm a little confused. But I am definitely going for the boy character here. Because he's got a pretty awesome looking orange scarf there. And apparently he wants to know her name as well. It's alright though. I think I'm going to go for Orangey in this one. I don't even know what names I want to choose anymore. I seem to have a new nickname every playthrough. Or I guess cycle through three different ones. But sent, they should be here soon. The Chroma region is still full of mysteries. I wonder what those new trainers will uncover alongside their Pokemon. But there's no point thinking about it. We shall see soon enough. And I am so ready to check this out. I actually didn't know the name of the region, but apparently it's Chroma. And maybe that has a little bit to do with why it's called Pokemon Spectrum. Of course, the Spectrum is like the uh, whole array of colors you can see in the rainbow, I think. And Chroma is kind of similar. It's like all the different colors, I think. I don't actually know, but I decided to send some of my assistants to deliver some gear you'll need. But you'll still need to come to my lab to choose your rare Pokemon. Didn't you literally just say this? Oh, whoa, what the heck? Um, I think my controls might be a little messed up right now, but... Okay, that definitely feels a little bit better. It looks like we can toggle on and off our running shoes. And we got our bag and trainer card already. Not really much need to check that out, but... Uh, yeah, let's, let's head out now that I've got my controls kind of sorted out. It still feels a little bit weird for some reason. There you are! Who is this? Is our data scientist? Sorry for barging in, but the professor gave me this parcel to deliver you. I guess he's literally a scientist. I don't know why I thought it was our dad, but... Got the Pokedex, got our Pokeballs. Man, they are not playing around in this game. They're giving us everything right off the bat. The professor found a batch of new Pokemon, so he wants to see you ASAP. That package I just gave you is pretty useless without Pokemon, right? So go get one now! They won't be there for long. I really hope they're still there, actually. He's got to deliver these parcels faster. I'll run to my legs delivery effortlessly by pressing the Z key on the keyboard. Well, I'm not really using a keyboard right now. I guess most people probably would be, but fortunately, um, I got X-Patter to help me out here in uh, using the controller for these types of games. But, whoa, that was pretty cool. It was the Pokemon black and white transition there. Or maybe black and white too, actually. I kind of want to see that again. I wonder if the birds um, will kind of show up again. Oh, they do. But yeah, it's called Lil Dune Town. And I wonder if there's actually like an upstairs to our place. Wow, there is. Pokemon notes. Kokoala, a rare grass type. Apparently they don't like bug Pokemon. People say it looks cute, but that can become surprisingly aggressive. High endurance, it has the ability to heal itself. Pyru, a rare fire type Pokemon. Okay, so they're obviously going over uh, the starter Pokemon here. But looks like we got a koala for our grass one. 
And then uh, Pyru, they are said to be competitive and they like fighting one another to gain strength. They jump long in high distances. It is said to share some trait with other rare fire types. So a kangaroo maybe? Uh, we got Taplat, the water type starter. This one is said to be the least understood. It has a strange ability to detect anything from any direction with its keen senses. This power comes from its tail. These and most Pokemon in the region have been unfound in any other region. The reason for this is unknown. Strangely enough, some Pokemon native to other regions can be found here. Most of them are said to share something in common. That's pretty cool. Definitely reminds me a little bit of Alola so far. Uh, with the way the region is kind of secluded off on its own. I'm guessing that's why there's so many Pokemon here that we've never seen before. Because it's like an island. It's isolated, you know? Did you get an email from the professor too? I'm gonna see him right away. I'm sure Knight will be there too. He always seemed really impatient about leaving this place. Anyway, see you there. So what's uh, her name? I guess we have two rivals in this game because she did mention someone named Knight and what the... Please don't tell me this is a Pokemon. <laughs> Tum. <laughs> is there really a Tumbleweed Pokemon in this game? <laughs> Alright then. Um, we got Strength Boulders and Rock Smash to the south. So probably not going to be able to do that. Maybe by the end of the demo, I don't really know, but Chi Chi is here. Not sure what that Pokemon is so far. There's no Pokemon Center here, so the Professor had the healing machines installed in everyone's homes. How nice of him. Wow, is this Professor like loaded? How the heck can he afford to give everyone healing machines? Unless healing machines actually aren't that expensive. I don't I don't really know how the Pokemon world works, man, but people like us have to make sure dangerous Pokemon don't come into town. Tumbly outside of tall grass are harmless though, so you might see a few of them around town. So it's called Tumbly. It literally is a Tumbleweed Pokemon. <laughs> like, come on, man. I don't know. I guess the starters look pretty cool so far, but uh, a Tumbleweed, that's just like maybe a little bit too much. But here is Knight's house. I wonder if this Knight person could actually be here. We should probably just go to the professor's lab. I mean, I'm kind of just dilly-dallying a little bit too much right now, but I did want to explore a little bit of this town because like I said, this is kind of a short game and I guess I could compare it a little bit to Pokemon Sage, which was a playthrough I did a while ago um, on a Pokemon game that actually 4chan developed, but it was pretty short and I ended up making, I think five videos on it. And I don't know how many gyms were in that game, but I did push it a little bit with, uh, you know, trying to make extra content about it because it was really short. But I don't think this game is quite as short, um, if I really remember. I guess I can't really remember because I've never played this before, but um, as far as what I was able to tell, it's not too bad because it has two gyms and 80 Pokemon. So either way, that was Eve's house. Um, I'm guessing Eve was the girl that just ran past us um, and said we should go over to the lab. So let's go meet up. I have a brother in Taldun Town, but I can't visit him because of the wild Pokemon. That's so sad. Maybe we can do it for you once we actually get a Pokemon of our own. Except I can't really find the lab. Um, I kind of feel a little dumb because I feel like the lab should not be hard at all to find, but... Am I missing something? Oh wait, literally right here. <laughs> the Pokemon lab. How did I not see that? I'm not sure, but there's Sunny's house too. Okay, maybe Sunny is actually um, that girl rival that we saw. Or are there three rivals? Why are all these houses empty, by the way? What is going on here? Must be out or something. Why would they leave their door open, though? I guess everyone in the Pokemon world leaves their doors open, which is why we can barge right into the Pokemon Lab. And it looks like we got our two rivals here already. Why can't I just get my Pokemon now? Calm down, Knight. It'll be more interesting if everyone chooses their Pokemon at the same time, don't you think? What do you mean? You can't stop complaining. Everyone's here now. Oh, I made it. Great, now that everyone's gathered, you guys can finally start your journey. And Orangi will get to choose his Pokemon first. Yes, in classic Pokemon fashion. What? Why? Because Sunny says she likes any Pokemon. And you've been annoying me for the past hour you've been here. Wow. Uh, I'm sure you'll be fine, regardless of your choice, Knight. Huh, you guys really like messing with me. Whatever, this might give me a tactical advantage anyway. Let's get on with it. Hurry up and choose your Pokemon, Orangi. They're all very rare Pokemon I found on my trip, so choose wisely. All right, Mr. Professor Yuka, and as suspected, we've got a koala grass starter here. We've got, I guess, a kangaroo fire starter, and we've got, oh my gosh, is that a, is that a platypus? Um, <laughs> I think this is a match made in heaven because I love platypus, platypi, platypuses. I, I don't, I don't really know about that one, but yes, I am definitely gonna give you the most exclusive of nicknames that I'm sure no one else ever came up with, Perry the Platypus, or I guess Taplat, or whatever it's called. I'll choose Kokoala. Wow, I figured he was going to choose the one that beats us. He said he was going to do strategy or something, and that means that poor little Sunny gets Pyru. That's actually kind of fitting though, because her name is Sunny, she gets the fire type. 
Well, I'm leaving. I want to start learning my new Pokemon right away. There's no need to stand around. Wait, he went out of the back of the lab? Always in a rush, that one. Anyway, you can check out the backyard to fight some weak, wild Pokemon for practice before you head out on your adventure. If you need to recover your Pokemon, you can always use that healing device I installed in your home, or the one right here in my lab. And one last thing, one more thing. A wise man once said that you can let your Pokemon outside of its ball. What? Oh my gosh! <laughs> she just broke the fourth wall too. She's like, what's a control key? I have no idea, but I'm sure you're smart enough to figure it out. And hey, it looks like a uh, little Taplat has come out of the Pokeball by default. This is so cute! Perry spun around in a circle! I wish I could do uh, the Perry the Platypus noise, the... Oh my god, that was horrible. <laughs> if anyone can do it out there, um, send me a Twitter video or something. Doing your best Perry the Platypus voice impression. Anyway, uh, this guy, talking about rare Pokemon, that's, that's great, dude. I thought maybe he might have something extra to give us, like a little gift before we depart, but I guess that is about it, so goodbye, Professor Yuka. Bring out the potential of you and your Pokemon. Let's do just that, as we head out to Lil Dune Town. And are these binoculars? Seems to be a yellow Pokemon that can be seen. A yellow Pokemon. Um, all I see so far are, you know, the, the three little monkeys, I guess. I forget these things' names. Panseer, Simiseer, no wait, that's the evolution. So there's Panpore, Panseer, and Pansage, I guess. And, oh, I did, I did not mean to talk to you, Perry, but uh, I guess he wants to play. Hey, now we can actually go over to uh, Route 1. Or maybe we already are in Route 1, but... Grass, fire, and water type Pokemon, you can catch them if you want. Oh, so we can actually get the three little elemental monkeys already if we wanted to. Not that I'm really seeing any, but that's because I haven't gone in the tall grass yet. Here it is at last. So I'm guessing in this little patch of grass we'll find the uh, water monkey. Or maybe something completely different. Okay, there's an opossum Pokemon. Apostle. That is pretty crazy. I think I've actually only ever once seen an opossum in real life. And it was like back in Florida we were doing... um. Like a picnic or camping kind of thing. I guess we weren't really camping because we didn't stay overnight, but... Either way, we went to like this camping area and there was like an opossum digging through the trash there. Haven't seen one since then. Did not know that they were in Australia too, uh, but... Seems pretty legit, man. Australia is definitely... Well, I actually have never been there, but it seems to me like it's a pretty hot place uh, most of the time. I mean, I'm sure they got winter, but I don't know if it gets like that bad there. Maybe in some areas, but anyway, as I mentioned, I'm gonna try to catch as many new Pokemon as we can because I would love to see all their new info, and we have caught ourselves an Apostle! I keep wanting to say Apostle, I don't know why Apostle, Apostle sounds similar, but repels predators by pretending to faint and emitting a strange rotten smell, however it doesn't always succeed at this. Really? I don't think Apossums really do that, but Maybe like a skunk? No, that's not really what skunks do either. They just kind of spray you. They don't really play dead and, and spray you. I don't know, it said it exudes a rotten smell, so it probably wants to make itself literally play dead. Not only does it play dead, it also smells dead, so... Pretty much gonna fool anybody, or it could fool me, definitely. Um, but... I guess the professor does actually have a lot of these water, or all types of elemental monkeys in here. Makes you wonder how the heck he got them all in his lab. Probably just corralled them from all around the region and said, You know what, guys? You're living with me now. I love me some primates. I gotta get a little bit closer to my animal instinct, you know? I don't know what I'm saying, man. But um, I have heard that there is a new evolution of these monkeys in this game, actually. And as the binoculars said, apparently there was a yellow Pokemon in the grass. So if you guys can put one and one together, you might guess what I'm hinting at here. But... I'm definitely going to keep looking around in here until we find it, because I would love to see that Pokemon. Uh, but, we keep getting opossums and Pampors, so... I don't know what's going on with that. Whoa! There it is! Pan Surge! Just when I was about to give up looking for it! Holy moly! That was uh, a little bit more surprising than I thought it would be. I don't know, I'm not really used to seeing Super Saiyan Pansier, I guess, or whichever one. This is Pan Surge, though, the electric type of the elemental monkeys. Of course, this isn't like a real Pokemon in the games, but in this game it's real, and it looks pretty awesome, not gonna lie. So I'm definitely gonna catch this little guy, especially because we have the water starter, so it'd be good to have something that we can use against other water Pokemon, maybe. Not that we're really gonna run into too many water Pokemon, I think, early on, but you never know. We've got ourselves a Pansurge, though, and that is so cool, man. I never thought that they would make... An electric monkey, but these guys thought of it, and it's the bright Pokemon. The lightning bolt shaped tuft on its head is full of energy. Other Pokemon may gain strength by touching it. 
Really? You gain strength by touching it? You don't get electrocuted or anything? Because I feel like we might get electrocuted instead, but maybe I just don't know. There's a torch right there, though, and for some reason, my Zelda instincts tell me that I have to light it on fire for some reason, but... Oh, wait, what? Perry's angry! What? Oh, or I guess he's just roaring? Okay, then. Anyway, uh, now that we got that pan surge, it is finally time to move on, but not before our rival battle. Wait up! Oh, it's night, actually. I thought it was gonna be sunny. Wait a second. You didn't think you'd leave without at least battling me first, now did ya? Let's do it! I was actually thinking that because we didn't really have a rival battle earlier in the lab, but we have it now, versus Knight. It's kind of cool that he's purple too, because I feel like, oh wow, look at that, throwing on the shades, bruh. What was that? Of course, he's got his Kokoala, and I am very glad that we actually trained up Perry up to level 6 as well, um, because now I guess we'll at least be at even level with him. Not really sure that we're, I guess, he probably doesn't have a grass move though, considering we didn't learn a water move, so not like it's really going to make a difference from like your usual level 5 rival battle, but it's cool to see a little change of pace, you know, we got the rival battle surprisingly after route 1. Oh my gosh, the little koala was like, uh, snot was dripping down, I, I didn't really know how to say that, but yeah, he had a pretty nasty one coming out there, kind of reminded me of Cub Chew for a second, which is kind of cute because it's also a bear Pokemon. Except this one's more of a koala bear, not really a polar one. They're polar opposites, you could say. But anyway, um, two more tackles should finish this little guy off. Unless he gets a critical hit here with Scratch, which I don't think will really happen. Um, I kind of feel like this game lags a little bit, though. I don't know if you guys can notice it in the video, but... It feels like sometimes during battles it like skips around a little bit. And I think I have a pretty good computer, so I'm guessing it's actually the game itself. And whoa, we're gonna gain two levels off of that as we defeated Trainer Knight. No way! Maybe you should have caught some more Pokemon, bruh. You're already stronger than me. That's fine. I need a competent rival to put my skill to the limit. Wait, oh, I thought he was saying like we're not a good enough rival for him, but I guess we're perfect. There you two are. I saw some of your battle. You both seem well off for beginning trainers. What's up, Professor? Actually, I came here with a favor to ask. I need one of you to deliver something for me. Of course, every professor needs something delivered, don't they? I can't do it because my Pokemon's weakened. Speaking of which, I gotta hurry back and heal it. Orangey, I'll rematch you later. I'm looking forward to it, bud. Hopefully his Kokoala has learned some better moves by then. Since you're going through Route 1, can you deliver this parcel to my wife for me? Oh, to his wife. Okay, that seems a little bit better than like, you know, Professor Oak just making you take it to a Pokemon. But... Uh, do it myself, but I have some research to do here with the Pokemon I found. Thanks! Hey, we got the parcel! I wonder what's actually in the parcel this time around, though. I think in the original Pokemon Red and Blue, it was like the Pokedex itself. You end up, you know, getting it in the parcel. Or, or was it Pokeballs? No, I think it was the Pokedex. I don't know, though, but here we are officially on Route 1. I guess that little route with the Elemental Monkeys was actually just the backyard of the Professor's Lab. I thought that might be Route 1, but... Now that we are on Route 1, we've got Rypek, the early bird Pokemon for the Chroma region, and it's got Intimidate, yo! That is actually, I guess, kind of unusual, I don't know, you don't really see Pokemon, or I guess birds with Intimidate. Oh my gosh! And we crit it! Killed it in one hit! Okay then! <laughs> I don't know, I think that didn't give us any experience too. Did it look like we got experience? I think it said 8, which is, might as well be nothing. I guess we are level 8 right now though. We actually got a lot of levels off of that battle with our rival. I don't know how the heck we got so much, but I'm hoping that maybe... Well, actually, this bubble will probably kill it in one hit. Yeah, <laughs> regardless of the critical hit. So I guess I should probably switch out to another Pokemon if we're hoping to catch this thing. You know what? Apostle, you're kind of cool, but I really want to check out Pan Surge. To be honest, Pan Surge is like such a cool concept like that they made another elemental monkey. I don't know. To me, that's so cool. So I'm gonna try it out, and of course we run into an Apostle. <laughs> I can't escape it, guys. This Apostle is everywhere. Literally can't escape it. Wait, oh wait, we, we actually ran away from it though, so we literally couldn't, or we could escape it. Dude, I don't know why I'm confusing myself so much today, but we got a Pokeball there, and we got another trainer here. Oh, maybe not. I guess he doesn't want to battle. Not feeling like Nate today. I don't know. Whoa, what is this thing? Dengo? What is it? Is that... I guess it's based on a dingo. I don't know what dingoes are, but I've definitely heard of dingoes being like kind of like wolf or hyena kind of animals. I don't really know though. Maybe we'll find out a little bit more about it if we catch it. So scratch away, Pan Surge. Holy! That did no damage, dude. I thought you were supposed to get strength from the bolt on your head. I thought you were supposed to be Thor here, man. Oh wait, actually, Pan Surge here is a girl, so maybe I can call her Pan. 
the first female Super Saiyan. Um, because I mean, it definitely reminds me of a Super Saiyan with it having the golden hair and stuff. But, what the heck, we actually ended up missing. I guess because it used Sand Attack. I can't help but think that this thing's name is Doggo, though. I don't know why, Doggo is just such a funny word to me now. Dog, Doggo, it's a Doggo world out there. But, let's just try to catch it then. And if we don't get it, well, dang. That would be bad, but we did it. We've got ourselves a Dango, and that is dang old great. Man, my puns, my puns are just too bad today. Just absolutely awful. It can survive in hot and dry environments despite thick fur, and it loves to play in the sand. So might as well be a little doggo Pokemon. I like it. Pretty cute stuff there. And no nickname for you. I kind of like to keep the original names on most of uh, the Fakemon that I catch. Uh, but except for Perry, I guess. Perry is an exception because Perry the Platypus, he just cannot resist that man. But hey, here it is, Rypek back in action, and this time around, I think we'll have a bit better luck catching it, considering Pansurge is the one leading the party, and he did actually gain that level 3 as well from that last battle, so we'll hopefully be able to do a little bit more damage here. Come on, Pan! Wait, I just realized that! It's Pan Surge, and I said I was going to call it Pan. I didn't even realize that part of it. I, I meant Pan because of Dragon Ball Z, or Dragon Ball Super, I guess, technically. Um, or GT, I guess, if you're an old school fan of GT and you saw Pan there. I guess that's where I originally saw Pan. I didn't think GT was that bad, to be honest, but I guess now that Super is out, I can definitely see how GT wasn't great. Anyway, um, enough Dragon Ball Z talk. I seem to talk about Dragon Ball Z every episode or for some reason, but let's go for our Pokeball and get ourselves yet another new Pokemon. Holy moly, we've already got a full party here. Or at least I think we've got a full party. This is definitely the early bird though, it looks, or it likes to stab things with its sharp beak. The red spots on its body are wet and have an odd smell? What? Does, what? Are they trying to say that it like pecks at its enemies and then lets them bleed all over him? That's, that's a little bit weird, that's like really cruel actually. Well, I guess not really cruel if it's like the animal, I don't know, animals are pretty cruel themselves, or naturally I guess, but... Man, I don't know, you don't usually hear about that type of stuff in Pokemon, I guess. Then again, there are some pretty messed up Pokedex descriptions in Sun and Moon, like Marini and Corsola. Man, that's the one that I will never forget, to be honest, because I guess that one, they kind of tell you in the story as well. But, hey, here's our first trainer! I need to train my Apostle to become the strongest in the region! I should be able to beat a Greenhorn trainer like you! What does Greenhorn mean? I've never heard that before! Whoa! Youngster Wheeler? Yo, is this man Joey Wheeler himself? That's pretty cool, they didn't want to call him Youngster Joey, so you know, they, they called him Youngster Wheeler. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's going to end up actually being called Joey though, because come on, Joey Wheeler, that's got to be a reference right there. Anyway, I'm definitely going to swap out uh, to Perry here though, because don't think uh, Pansurge can handle the Apostle. Even though Apostle's not really the most threatening Pokemon out there, I don't, I don't think Pansurge can really do it up. I mean, Pansurge just really does no damage either, but Bubble definitely does, so here we go Perry! Hit him with the platypus bubble. I really like this though. This is so cool, man. The music, the graphics, the Fakemon themselves look so cool so far. And it actually does remind me a lot of Pokemon Sage, though. I guess some um, just because they're like really polished fan games. I mean, this one is a little laggy, but aside from that, it definitely feels a lot more polished than um, a lot of the lower or I guess early development fan games that I've seen. Um, but this one I'm not really sure, like I said, when it came out. I don't know how long it's been in development, but I really hope that they actually do continue to update it. As of right now, there's only two gyms, which I will be playing up to, um, but it would be awesome to actually continue this full thing, because the Pokemon in it so far are really, really cool, man. And I have a feeling I'm going to miss them once this playthrough's over, but uh, I'm already talking about it. It's literally the first episode, and I'm already talking about this playthrough ending. I guess I'm just a little bit scared because the game is short, but I don't know. I should just enjoy it for what it is, and I guess what we've got. So, I heard Professor Yuka recently found some new Pokemon and gave them the trainers. Yep, um, one of them right here, bro. I guess my Pokemon isn't out right now, like, you know, Perry the Platypus is the new one. But hey, Pansurge seems pretty new to me. Maybe these guys are used to seeing them, but I'm definitely not. You should try checking out the preschool. I doubt you'll need it, though. Really? Preschool, bro? You're telling me to go to preschool right now, not even just like regular school, preschool. Okay, I guess uh, we'll have to check it out. If the hiker man tells us to, then we gots to. I don't really think he was a hiker, but kids these days seem to love traveling with their Pokemon. I wasn't as adventurous when I was a child. 
Well, that kind of sucks. I feel like that's just a thing nowadays in general. Like, kids are growing up a lot more adventurous in general nowadays um, than I guess how people used to be. I don't know, I guess just people used to like to play it safe a lot more. And then again, I am kind of generalizing, and I only live in America, so... I wouldn't know anything about the Chroma region here, all the way in Australia. But I do know one thing, and that's that we've gotta head to the Pokémon Center. What is this? Hello there, I'm the helpful mess man of helpfulness. Need your Pokémon to follow you. Talk to me. Wait, what? Why do you wear a mask? I can't let people know my identity. If they knew that, they would hunt me down every hour of the day for help. As great as I am, I still gotta sleep, you know? Hold on, I thought we could, like, just let our Pokémon out of the ball with, like, a the control key or something. Can all Pokémon follow me? Let me tap into my otherworldly knowledge. Hmm? Nope, only some can follow you. Don't ask me why that is, it's a secret. I'm sure your starter Pokemon would always like to follow you though, right? Yep, that sounds about right. I'm guessing that not all Pokemon, or at least not all the new ones, have the overworld sprites, and that's probably why they can't all follow us, but most of the early Pokemon should have some. Maybe just not the evolutions or something, um, but I don't know. Let's heal up our Pokemon though, that is certainly something we gotta do. And why the heck are there only two Pokeballs there? I'm pretty sure I have a full team of six Pokemon right now, don't I? Oh, well, we have five Pokemon, which is definitely close enough. Um, I'm gonna try out Rypek, though, because it seems like such a brutal Pokemon, and whoa! It actually flies behind us! It's kind of lame that it's not flapping its wings, but, you know, it's still pretty cool. It looks like it's flying, I guess. As long as we're running, that is. And it was just poking at our stomach, dude! Stop that! What the- We just learned that this Pokemon likes to peck at things, and apparently lets them bleed out all over his fur, or feathers, so... I definitely don't be wanna or don't wanna be getting pecked in the stomach by this thing. That is, yeah, uh, that just sounds devastating, man. Anyway, over here we've got uh, Professor's wife. Hi there. You must be the perfect thing Joshua talked to me about. Thanks. That's weird. There's an extra in here. It's useless for me to have it. Why don't you take it? And we get this thing, the Poke Gear. Wow. How did I not know it was that? I just gave you, or what I just gave you, should be helpful on your travels. Right now it doesn't have many functions, but it does include a map. While you're here, I may as well give you a technical machine too. Ooh, nice and technical, we get False Swipe right off the bat, which of course will let you catch Pokemon without KOing them. Or I guess it'll let you leave them always at 1 HP so that you can catch them easier. But you know about the Pokemon League, right? There are some places in this region which are pretty skilled trainers. If you want to get the most out of your adventure, I'd recommend you seek out and challenge gym leaders to take you and your Pokemon to the top. I think that's the real reason Professor Yuka decided to give you your Pokemon. He always likes seeing trainers maximize their potential. That's pretty cool. I don't know why Professor Yuka just reminds me of Kikui for some reason. I guess with him having a wife too, and Kikui literally has a wife in Sun and Moon as well. That's also a researcher of some kind, so pretty cool. I don't know what she's researching about those tumbleweed Pokemon. Maybe why they're so boring and tumbleweedy. I don't know. Tumbleweeds just seem like just boring. I, like, literally, you see a tumbleweed in movies whenever there's a boring scene of a desert or, like, just nothing happening. I have a sister, but she's all the way in Lildoon Town. I hope I can get my own Pokemon one day. Oh, wow. So this is actually, we talked to his sister earlier. That's kind of crazy. This Rypek loves playing with me. And I guess my Rypek loves playing with me, too. Except mine doesn't flap its wings. What the heck? How come hers ru- What? Dude, that's that's not fair, man. How come hers gets to flap its wings? This is my favorite spot. I think I can even see Lil Doom from here. Oh, I guess if Pokemon worked like that, if we could actually change the perspective and stuff, we'd probably be able to see the town all the way in the distance. But it's not how it works, man. We can only get this top-down view, which I definitely don't mind. But here is the Pokemon Preschool. So I think that is actually what we're going to be taking on in the next episode because that is going to be it for today. Wait a second. I thought this Pokemon was closed. Oh my... I guess it is closed. What was that? How'd you get in here? This mart's supposed to be closed. Sorry, mate. Go to the Pokemon Center if you want to buy items. Okay, then. That is pretty creepy. I don't know what that was. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Pokemon Spectrum. If you'd like to see more, drop a like down below and let me know in the comments what your favorite starter Pokemon in this game is so far. I guess we really only checked out Perry the Platypus, but you got to see the other two, and they seem pretty cool as well. So that is gonna be it. See you guys in the next one.